If you have a 3D printer, but you've always wanted to make stuff out of metal, not plastic, I can help you with that. I'm gonna go through all the many different ways you can do that in this video. This list isn't completely, absolutely exhaustive. There's a million different ways to do it. But if you're gonna get started, it's probably gonna be through one of the methods I'm gonna talk about here. I've been helping people a lot with sand casting lately, and I've noticed that a lot of people don't know what I mean or don't mean by that. Uh, that's why I'm making this video. At the end, I'll tell you how you can get started, but first, we'll go through a bunch of different methods, including not making a metal thing at all. First up, you've probably noticed all the electroplating videos and stuff around. This is great. You take a plastic thing, you print, coat it with like a conductive, conductive paint, and then you, you plate it with metal. So you put an actual coating of real metal on the outside. It looks freaking awesome. I have never done electroplating, but it looks amazing. I think that's a perfect method if, say, you want something to look like metal, but you don't necessarily need the mechanical properties, it doesn't need to be strong, uh, or, or say you want it to look like metal, but you really don't want it to be heavy like metal. I can think of a great example. So say you're doing like cosplay, and you want like a, a metal Lord of the Rings Gimli helmet, or an Iron Man thing, and you're gonna wear this all day at a convention, and you don't want it to weigh 20 pounds on your head. Clearly you want to electroplate that. Don't, don't cast one in solid metal. You're gonna break your neck and your chiropractor will end up with all your money. Or let's say you're doing like a Final Fantasy costume thing, and you're gonna have your gigantic metal sword. Well, Michael Cthulhu can make you one, but carrying a 50 pound sword around is gonna get a little bit tiresome. Print one giant in plastic, electroplate it. it, it'll look great, it'll look fantastic. Just don't drop the thing or it's gonna break in half. The stuff is still made out of plastic after all. Someday I'll try it, but personally the things I make, I need them to be like strong. It's it's really hard to argue with how cool they look though. That Those, those are really cool. First category we're gonna talk about is something I call lost something casting, investment casting. This is like lost wax. Traditionally they use wax for this. But you can print you can print stuff in special burnout filaments that will burn away without leaving ashes or resins. There are resins that will burn away without leaving ashes. Traditionally, they use wax. Some of the filaments and some of the resins use wax, although not all of them. People sometimes use just normal PLA for this. It's it's probably not the best. The ash will screw up the metal casting. The one I've done most recently is in plaster. I take a 3D print. In this case, this is a, a wax resin. This is a non-wax but still burnout resin. You can even use some filaments like polycast PVB, put it in plaster, and then you have to burn that print away, which leaves a hole in the plaster. This is a casting that I did with a, a polycast PVB print. Uh, there is potentially a new PLA design for burnout, which will be much easier to print. Look, look forward to that in the new year. That's going to be pretty awesome. There will definitely be a video on that. You pour the metal in, gravity pulls it down, or you can even use a vacuum machine, which will suck air through the plaster and suck it into all the fine details. That's how you get this fine filigree detail completely filling in, in wiry metal. I've even successfully done this process with an Amera Labs test town, which is really, really insane. Like the little tiny resin details you can get using this vacuum method. Perfect for jewelry. A lot of jewelry is made this way. Even professional jewelry now, a lot of it's a lot of it's resin printed. Or you can make like ornate little miniatures. Remember, this is this is not plated. This this is solid metal. You tend to be limited by the size of the flask and the vacuum machine that pulls the air through. The flasks are very expensive. The 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 plaster is kind of expensive, and you don't get to reuse it. So you're you're sort of limited on size. But this is great for small, highly detailed things. The next kind of investment casting uses a ceramic shell. You build up layers of a ceramic and sand, and then you fire this in a kiln. The firing process also burns out the print. You can use the same stuff, the same resins, the same filament. You're again limited by like how big is your burnout oven, but you can get some pretty cool stuff. A lot of sculptures are made this way. So think, you can make some pretty big sculptures. This is the method, if you've seen a lot of recent videos by Robinson Foundry, this is the method he's using, ceramic shell in a burnout oven and his, his results look amazing. They look really cool. You probably can't get the same level of tiny, tiny details like all the little wires on the test town because there's nothing sucking the air through. The air can still get trapped, but you can still get some pretty awesome detail. Both of these methods, the plaster and the ceramic shell, it's not just for ornate stuff. You can get some really, really precise details. You just have to look at the marketing material for polycast and you'll see what I mean. They're making like industrial looking things. Obviously a lot of these still need machining after the fact, but, but it's not just ornate stuff. You can get really ornate looking stuff. You can also get really precise mechanical stuff. It's very cool. It's just kind of expensive and you're, you're a little more size limited on this technique. Now there's something else where you burn away the pattern. It's called lost foam casting. You've probably seen this. Maker Size, for example, used lost foam to make a lot of his gingery parts. 
Someone makes something out of foam, just buries, like covers it in plaster, buries it loosely in sand, and then they pour the metal in. That metal flowing through burns out the foam. A lot of people use this method. I have personally avoided it because most of the lost foam castings I've seen are full of holes, they're very porous. I'm sure there's a better way to do it. Um, but you can also do this with prints, with PLA specifically. If you print in, in vase mode, you cover that in plaster and the metal going through will burn out the PLA. Older videos by Robinson Foundry use this method and he gets some pretty awesome results. So you can't, you can't really argue with the results. Though he seems to have, have transitioned to a uh, ceramic shell and I think his results now look even better. I would suggest skipping this lost foam method if you can and skip straight to ceramic shell. The results look far better, uh, but I get it. Burnout ovens are expensive. Uh, so, is, so is the shell stuff, so is the plaster stuff. This is a lot more accessible to just bury it in play sand or something. Um, so if that's, how, if that's what gets you started, go for it. Just know you're probably not gonna end up there if you want high quality castings that aren't full of holes. Now let's move on to die casting. So die casting is an industrial process. There's generally a steel die and they force like a lower temperature metal, like up to aluminum temperature in there. And it cools in like a steel die and then it releases the part. They put the die together, they force more in. How can you use 3D printing for that? Well, for low enough temperature metals, you can. There's a cool new resin coming out by Monocure. I have a part here, two part mold put together and I can actually pour metals in here up to 550 Celsius, which means my, my favorite metal ZA12, what this is made out of, that, that's like 480, 500 Celsius pouring in. So you can totally do that with this. Now this is a two part mold. There's gonna be a video coming out on this later when I do a bunch more cool stuff with it. This is made uh, to make this metal great for my, my respirator. This is metal. But this is this wasn't made with this. This was made with sand casting, which we'll get to in the future. There's a video on that in the past, also from a 3D printed pattern. This, I think, shows really great promise for, for the future of just direct printing a mold for yourself, right? A split mold. So I could use this many times until the heat damages it. It will break down, especially the hotter the metal, the, the quicker it'll break down. But it's I've tried it a bit and it's 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 really cool. It's not exactly like die casting, but it's it's pretty close. And you could do it with just a normal resin printer. You know, you, you could have an old Mars 2 or whatever, and it would work. The downsides of that, you're kind of limited by the size of your printer, how big a mold you can make. Um, you also need quite a lot of resin for these molds, especially these are quite thick because this metal is quite hot, but they don't just have to be split patterns. You can use this as like an analog for a ceramic shell also. You know, a thin shell, you pour the metal and then you gotta chip it away. It's a one-time use at that case, but then you can ignore things like needing to get the mold apart and get the part out. You know, you're, you can make cool ornate shapes that way. Probably sculptures and it's early days with this resin. There's videos coming, shows huge promise. It's gonna be really cool. Now we're gonna end on sand casting. The thing that started this video, what is sand casting? Well, Lost Foam uses sand, that's not sand casting. By sand casting, I mean specifically, when you see my videos or other videos of people using that, that sticky red sand called Petrobon, that's sand casting. You can print a pattern. I have one here. You ram it up in the sand. You then take the pattern out. You don't burn this stuff away. It has to be designed that you can get it out. Then you put the sand back together. You can reuse the patterns an infinite number of times. You can reuse the sand, although higher temperature metals will burn the oil out of Petrobond or the moisture out of green sand. I have done tons of things with sand casting. I did this bronze sign here, this, this grill cover that I showed you before. I got spears in, in bronze and zinc. You can do bigger ones, daggers and swords and stuff. Really big stuff. Like this lathe that I'm working on. All of these parts were sand cast, including this, the carriage, which was in a very recent video. That's the part that, that rides up here. All sand cast from 3D prints, except this big one. I had to use a wood pattern for that. This bronze ring that I'm wearing is sand cast. This little bronze watchmaker's anvil. This thing, this is a print, a replica of the, uh, the door handle in the Apollo 11 uh, command module, the, the spaceship that went around the moon. I don't have the casting for this because that's currently on display at the Smithsonian as part of a big project with a bunch of other makers. Each method can do some pretty awesome things. You just need to learn the proper techniques uh, for that particular method. And I can help you with that. I have an online course that will help you use your 3D printer to learn sand casting. Now you know exactly what I mean when I say sand casting. Uh, if you wanna learn the proper techniques that make castings that look like this and not like this, or this, click down below to sign up. 
Click below. You can sign up for the mailing list. You can get some tips and tricks. And also, if there are sales, you'll get coupon codes uh, through that email. So if you want to get started with something new in the new year and expand your maker skills, check that out. Hopefully I'll see you there. The people in there are making some pretty cool stuff already. Now, if you really want to get into metal casting and you want to know what other kinds of equipment you're going to need, I made a video going over all that. You can click it on the screen now. I'll see you there. Okay.